So as this is continuing, again, um, chapter three notes, uh, now looking at some more practice problems or more problems with grams, um, going to moles. Um, first problem I wanna talk about is this one um, and it, introducing something called percent yield. Um, so we have something called silver sulfide. Um, silver sulfide is AG2S. Um, if I have it in an impure ore, how many grams of silver are obtainable from 250 grams of the ore at 75% of it is this compound? And then if I have only 130 grams of uh, silver would be reclaimed, what is the percent yield? So down here, percent yield is what we call the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100, okay? So actual yield is what you get in the experiment itself. So in this case, it's 130. Uh, theoretical yield is always gonna be something you calculate from the uh, problem at hand. Uh, so that's always gonna be how it is. So I'm gonna pause the video and then you're gonna see um, the answers here. So see if you could try this. So um, this is how I did the problem. Again, if you got the same answers, it doesn't matter um, how you set this up. But if I start with the 250 grams of that ore, 70% of it is the silver sulfide. So you could take 70% of that number. I just set it up as a proportion here. 70 is to 100. And then if I look at my formula of AG2S, essentially I have two silvers for every for all of the um, total in there. So if I wanna know how much is silver, all I gotta do is take the mass of the silver two times the molar mass of silver plus, oh, excuse me, over the total, and that will give me my um, amount of silver. If everything went perfectly, that's how much I should have gotten out of this ore. But that's your theoretical yield. So that's always something you're gonna calculate one way or the other. Then you might be given some experimental data or they did the experiment and here's how much they actually got. So you're gonna take the actual over the theoretical and might, uh, multiply it by 100 to get about 85.5% here. Three digits seems fine for percentages here. So again, your goal is to get to 100%, okay? But do realize you can get above 100%. That does not mean that you did something extra special. It just means that maybe when you mask the final product, there was some contamination, maybe it was still wet, uh, many different things. So please be sure you understand it's always actual over theoretical. All right, so on to the next page. We are now gonna get into a little bit of review of what we call stoichiometry. Um, and so when we're looking at chemical reactions, we are looking at rearrangements of atoms, okay? That's really what a chemical reaction does. So new bonds are formed, that's what Dalton figured out. And this is really focused on the electrons, okay? That's where all chemistry is, is the electron. So if we have this rearrangement, we could quantify how much of uh, our starting material versus how much of our ending material uh, based on what we call the stoichiometry. So for the stoichiometry problems, we're going to need a balanced chemical equation. And so the one I'm going to focus on is um, uh, the Haber process. Nitrogen plus hydrogen produces ammonia. And these are all gases. Uh, it's called the Haber process, a very famous equation. So in this balanced equation here, okay, I cannot change the formulas in order to balance them. So NH3 is NH3, I can't change that. Um, and the balanced equation does give me what I call my mole ratios. So I have it as kind of a recipe for chemists. Um, it gives me my proportions. So again, if I have a one in front of the nitrogen and a three in front of the hydrogen, that means for every one mole of nitrogen, I need three moles of hydrogen. And that is always going to be the case for this reaction. So it does give me that. But what does a balanced equation not give us? Okay, so pause the video and see if you could come up with some things that a balanced equation doesn't give us about a chemical reaction. So a couple things that a balanced reaction doesn't tell us is uh, what temperature should it be at? Um, should there be a particular pressure, especially since these all happen to be um, gases? So do I need to be at a certain pressure in order for this to work correctly? Um, things like heat. 
So is this an endothermic process or an exothermic process? Again, a balanced equation doesn't tell me that. Um, how much product will I actually make? So I don't have any of that information um, in terms of the thing. And uh, the steps it takes. One thing we are gonna focus on a lot more than we did um, in first year chemistry is the fact that um, when nitrogen reacts with hydrogen, there might be multiple steps it goes through to make that product. Generally, a balanced equation is just the overall of the reaction. It doesn't give what we call its mechanism. So when we get to second semester, we're gonna be talking about mechanisms, and we're gonna talk about, well, what happens at each one of those steps. So the balanced equation does give us a lot of information, but it doesn't give us everything. So um, one of the uh, problems that we did with stoichiometry is what we call limiting reagent or limiting reactant type problems. So I'm going to show you again how to do these problems. And again, with all of these processes, I don't care how you set up the problem. Um, I just care that you do the problem and you get the correct answer. So if nitrogen and hydrogen are reacting to give ammonia, and that's the equation I just showed you, 10 grams of nitrogen reacts with 5 grams of hydrogen, how many grams of ammonia can be formed? Is 15 grams the correct answer because of conservation of mass? So I'm going to pause the video here in a second just so I can get things set up. So what you will see here is I put the balanced chemical equation. I just have it on a bigger sheet of paper, so I have some more room to go here. And I'm trying to figure out if I have 10 grams of nitrogen and 5 grams of hydrogen, how much ammonia can I actually make um, in grams? So uh, we are going to be using a BCA table before change and after. Um, we use that first year chemistry as well to kind of organize our thoughts. If you do things differently, that's fine with me. Again, this is just a process that I like to teach uh, to help you through this. So in order for us to compare things in chemistry, we can't compare things in grams, okay? It has to be in moles. So I have to divide each one of these by their respective molar mass, and I get about nitrogen is 0.357, and this is 2.5 moles. So I have to figure out from the balanced chemical equation which one is what we call our limiting one, the one that's going to run out first in a chemical reaction. So you are going to have to kind of um, find your own method to this. Uh, but really, I try to look at the um, uh, reactant to see which one is going to limit me by looking at uh, the one with a one. So this is a one versus a three. So that means if I have 0.357 moles of nitrogen, I need three times that of the hydrogen. And then what I do is I compare it to what is given in the problem and see whether or not I have enough of it. So if I have 0.357, if I multiply that by three, it's a little bit over one mole. And I definitely have one mole. I have 2.5 moles. So that means that this is going to be an excess Okay, and this is going to be my limiting reagent or limiting reactant. So this one's going to be completely used up. So what I'm going to do for change is I'm going to subtract that amount to get this down to one, because essentially what it's doing is being used up in this process. Then I have to realize, well, this change is going to be corresponding to the balanced chemical equation. So this change is actually my x. Now, since this is a 1x, this is going to be a 3x. And on this side of the equation, I'm always subtracting from um, what I'm starting from. And over here, I'm starting with zero moles of product. So this side always has to be the plus side. I cannot subtract from zero. This is not math class. So this is plus 2x. So again, the change is always going to be proportionate to the balanced chemical equation, the 1, the 3, and the 2. That's where that number is coming from. So obviously my x must be 0.357. So this is going to be minus 3 times 0.357, which comes out to be around 1.07. And there's some rounding issues all over the place here. Uh, but we're just going to kind of deal with this. So this is 1.43 moles of hydrogen left over, left over. Now, I wasn't asked about this, but I'm kind of showing this whole problem because you will have other problems like this. And then really what I want to know is how much product did I make? So 2 times 0.357 uh, is going to be about 0.714 moles of my ammonia. And that's really what I want to know, okay? So I could take that moles and I can multiply it by its molar mass, which is 17 grams per mole, okay? And nitrogen and three hydrogens. So that's going to end up being about 12 grams of ammonia being produced. 
how many grams of excess hydrogen? Well, all I got to do is multiply that by two grams per mole. And I end up with about 2.9 grams of hydrogen. Again, that wasn't asked in the question, but it's to show you if you have a problem like this in the future. So going back to the problem itself, it said, okay, how many grams can be formed? So we calculated 12, but it's also asking, isn't it 15? Because you started with 10 and you have five, but realize the limiting reagent is telling you that not all of it's being used up. You had extra hydrogen. So this is not going to be um, equal to 15 grams. So again, law of conservation does hold because you have the same number of nitrogens and hydrogens on both sides, but grams doesn't have to be the same. All right, so the next problem, okay, um, is I have 10 grams of silver nitrate and seven, uh, excuse me, 10 grams of silver sulfate. Um, it's asking essentially what is, um, and if I give, uh, 8.9 grams of silver sulfate, find the theoretical yield and the percent yield. So this is your actual yield in this problem. So this is kind of doing a stoichiometry problem and a percent yield problem. So I'm going to pause the video and then pick up there. 